Today, we'll be talking about the disorders of copper transport, and these include Wilson and Menke's disease. So copper, or CU, is obtained in the diet and enters the circulation via the intestine. There's a transporter called ATP7A that is particularly important for allowing copper to enter through the intestinal epithelial cells and into the bloodstream, where it can then circulate to all of the tissues that require copper, um, particularly the brain as shown here on the right. Now, when the body is done with copper or needs to uh, regulate its levels, it tends to excrete or remove that copper via the bile. So that's a process that takes place in the liver, as shown here also on the diagram. And that takes place through a transporter called ATP7B. So the way I remember that is B for bile. So why do we even need copper? Well, it's an important cofactor for dozens of enzymes in the body. And in particular, I've listed three of those enzymes here. Um, those include PAM, which helps modify neuropeptides, which are important for normal brain functioning. Lysyl oxidase, which helps form collagen and elastin fibrils that are components of connective tissue, such as the skin. And tyrosinase, which is an enzyme that catalyzes the first step of melanin synthesis, which is a process that provides pigment to the skin. Now, there are two disorders of copper transport, as I mentioned earlier. The first is Menke's disease, which is due to ATP7A loss of function variants. The thing I want you to keep in mind about Menke's disease is that the symptoms are due to copper deficiency, okay? And that's in contrast to Wilson disease, where the symptoms are related to copper excess. I want to present these disorders side by side so we'll walk through it. Um, the first difference we see is that the inheritance patterns for these two conditions are different. So Menke's disease is X-linked recessive and Wilson disease is autosomal recessive. The genes are different. So ATP7A for Menke's and ATP7B for Wilson. We've talked about the principles for each of these diseases whereby Menke's disease has an association of copper depletion, so copper cannot enter the body. And then Wilson's disease has an issue of copper excess because uh, copper cannot exit the body. Now, Menke's disease is much more severe than Wilson's disease and tends to start in the infantile period, so usually around the first few months of life, and can present with neurologic symptoms like regression, hypotonia, and seizures. Connective tissues can also be involved, so you tend to see sparse, coarse hair and also loose skin. And patients can also have hypopigmentation due to the deficiency of tyrosinase, due to the copper deficiency. And if left untreated, patients often die as toddlers, if not earlier, unfortunately, um, because the disease is so severe. Now, in Wilson disease, Symptoms usually start as a teenager, although it can be seen in children, so you will not see Wilson's disease present in a infant. Wilson disease can present oftentimes with psychiatric symptoms like depression. So if you see a teenager with depression who also has, say, tremors or difficulty speaking, you really want to think about Wilson disease. Now, unique to Wilson disease and not seen in Mackey's disease are hepatic symptoms. So these include jaundice as well as liver failure. And the copper doesn't only build up in the liver, but it can also build up in the cornea of the eye, and those present as Kaiser Fleischer rings. And lastly, hemolysis can result and can be seen in Wilson disease. Now, both diseases present with low serum copper as well as low ceruloplasmin. And the treatments for these diseases are the opposite of one another. So in Menke's disease, remember you have a copper deficiency, so you want to give copper. 
and this is as subcutaneous copper. So going through the GI tract orally would not help in this case because the issue is with the intestinal copper transporter ATP7A. So by delivering subcutaneously underneath the skin, we're able to deliver that copper to the body's tissues. And in contrast, in Wilson disease, rather than giving copper, uh, we actually want to remove copper. And so that's via chelation therapy with small molecules known as D-penicillamine or triantine. Patients can also be prescribed a low copper diet to prevent copper from getting in in the first place. And then oral zinc helps block absorption of copper in the intestine. And then also for patients who develop liver failure, you can consider a liver transplant. If you found this video useful, please like, subscribe, and share. You can also subscribe to my weekly newsletter with board-style questions for genetics exams. And you can also buy me a coffee to show your support for this channel. Thank you.